In this season of Pentecost, we are gathered in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We join together in our opening hymn, Come to Me, All Pilgrims of Sea. God, to whom all hearts are open and all desires known, from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will, and 
God's mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As he called the ordained minister of the church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. And please be seated for the reading. For special music, right? Yeah. Give me Jesus. Oh, no, I need to do this. <laughs> Jerusalem. 
Lo, your king comes to you. Triumphant and glory, victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall command peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Chant, we will chant Psalm 145 responsibly. By verse, beginning with myself and then followed by all of you on the, e on the even, on the bold verses. <laughs>
special name for it is stool, and it looks kind of like a yolk, which I'm not talking about the egg type of yolk. I'm talking about the yolk that you may see that goes over around like animals, like ox that like are pulling things to the field like, back in the day before there were tractors. So this is what um, the idea behind what a stool is for pastors. It is on us. It's not very heavy, but it reminds us that we are serving, we're supposed to be serving our congregation, we're supposed to be serving our community. So it's kind of like the yoke that we wear, the sign of our role as pastors. But pastors aren't the only ones who wear something around their necks to kind of signal to other people that they're there to help. Can you think of anybody else that like wears something around their neck that you know when you see them, like, oh, that person is there to help me? Like disciples, maybe I'm thinking like something that you may see like in your everyday lives. Like I was thinking like a doctor. What do doctors sometimes wear on their neck? Stethoscope. Yeah, yeah. So if you see someone who has like a stethoscope or maybe like a white coat, you might think, okay, that person might be a doctor. Maybe they're here to help me. Or someone with like a, maybe like with an ID badge, like in in like a doctor's office or maybe like a hospital, like nurses wear like a little lanyard around their neck and it has their name on it. You know that person is there to help you. But there's other things that we can tell about people that we know that they're there to help us. Like maybe like a firefighter, they have like a uniform, right? They're wearing their gear and you know that they're there to help. So that's kind of what Jesus is talking about when he is, you're gonna hear him say, my yoke is easy. Yeah, right. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we can remember that even if we're all like not wearing like the special shirt, the special scarf that goes around the neck, that we, all of us, are called to help people, to be like the disciples. Maybe we're not like wearing what they're wearing, but we can help people wearing our regular clothes. We can uh, be out there to be like Jesus, to help people, to encourage them, and to tell, remind people that they're loved by God, which I think is pretty cool. Is that something we can do? Even if we can't, like, kind of have something around our necks, we know that we can go ahead and do that. I think that's pretty awesome. All right, let's pray together. God, we thank you so much for sending your son Jesus to us to uh, show us your love. And we ask you to help us remember that we are here to show that love to others and to serve others, and that you're also here to uh, help us to do that as well. Son 
knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. On July 4th, in an auditorium filled with people gathered in the Vienna Community Center for a public reading of the foundational documents of American democracy as part of the third annual Liberty Amendments Month. We got a nice little packet right here of documents to uh, read together. In the span of about 90 minutes, together we read, among other things, we read the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, including the Liberty Amendments, and the Emancipation Proclamation. Now, hearing from these words long ago was a very powerful experience. When it was my turn, I was really excited to be able to read these words out loud from the Emancipation Proclamation, which of course was written by Abraham Lincoln. On the first day of January, 1863, all persons held as slaves within any state or designated part of a state shall be then henceforward and forever free. And the executive government of the United States, including the military and naval authority, will recognize and maintain the freedom of such persons. Powerful stuff. In hearing the entirety of the Emancipation Proclamation, I was reminded, though, of many of the citizens of this country who did not come here of their own free will. They were forced on journeys, forced to be enslaved, forced to never be able to know their country of origin. I was also struck by how our foundational documents are inspirational, but also incomplete. During one of the many times during this reading that the word men came up, one of the females, female readers stage whispered, and women. <laughs> because women, non-binary people, people of color, differently abled people, neurodiverse people, and others have been left out of these foundational documents, even as the writers themselves fought so hard for representation during this oppressive regime. So what does freedom mean to our fellow citizens who were not free until 1863, and even since then face many challenges to that freedom? What happens when freedom is sometimes at the expense of others, or is not awarded equally? As it turns out, freedom might not be the only legacy that we've inherited from our founding fathers. We've also inherited imperfect systems and institutions. And this can be a heavy burden to bear, one that some of us are not always conscious of, but is still ever present. And it continues to be a heavy burden for our fellow citizens who have been and continue to be left out. So as Paul wrote to his the Christian community in Rome, we find ourselves participating in the very things we know will not bring life to all people. Wretched people are we, or we could say men and women. We can explain with Paul. Who will free us from this body of death that has trapped us under its heavy weight? To our plight, Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Now, these teachings of Jesus may sound a little familiar. It's especially popular text for uh, funeral and memorial services. But Jesus is not just speaking about those who have died. Jesus is speaking to us right here and right now. Jesus is speaking to us too. Now Jesus didn't come in order to make your life more difficult. 
Jesus comes to give us the rest that we so desperately need. And not that Jesus is going to magically take away all of our worries and make our lives perfect with the wave of a magic wand. No, Jesus gives us rest because Jesus takes on our burdens with us and for us. Jesus takes on our inheritance of unjust structures. He takes on the burdens that we place upon ourselves. He takes on our, the sins of the things that we have done and things we have left undone. He takes on all things that bring death, including death itself. And these burdens and heavy yokes stay in that tomb of death when Jesus burst forth on that Easter morning. We have been freed by the only kind of freedom that really matters, freedom that comes from Jesus. This freedom is worth a hundred bills of rights, more than any declaration of independence, and more than a million fireworks shows. Your liberties, your privileges, and your choices can be limited or upended, but no one can take this freedom in Christ away from you. We have already been made free by Jesus, and there's nothing that we can do to earn it, and there's nothing we can do to negate it. And this was the revelation of, you know, that one guy named Martin Luther 500 years ago. This was his thought, that nothing will stand in the way of your free access to the love of God. So, who are we to stand in the way of the freedom of others in this moment right here and right now? Now, we may never get to write something as awesome as the Emancipation Proclamation, or do something big that will be remembered for generations. But in the meantime, let us live in such a way that when our kids, grandkids, nieces or nephews, or the kid down the street wants to interview you for a history project about this moment in time in history, may we live so that we can look them in the eye and say, we did what we could. We listened. We learned. We marched. We worked for justice. We followed Jesus and helped to carry the burden of others. Our words and our actions can still proclaim emancipation. We can carry one another to freedom with the help of Jesus. Thanks be to God. We continue our worship with our hymn of the day. I heard the voice of Jesus say, you stand. <laughs> Thank you. 
confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. God of the covenant, you call ministers to proclaim your gospel of grace throughout the world. Inspire pastors, deacons, church musicians, and all ministers of your word as they carry out your work. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all creation, you reveal your goodness through all you have made, rivers and seas, plants and animals, and endangered species. Prosper the work of conservation organizations botanical gardens, zoos, and wildlife sanctuaries. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire that all the peoples of the world live in peace. Guide government leaders at all levels, national, state, and local, to work for justice, mercy, and reconciliation. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, we pray for Jeff, Donna, Mike, John, Angela, Steve, Patty, Dorothy, Phil, Betsy, Judy, Don, Claire, Henry, Dave, James, Mia, Michelle, Michael, Bill, Laura, Gloria, the Z family, and the people of Ukraine, Sudan, and France. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of rejoicing, you have brought us together this day to worship around word and sacrament. Encourage children in their learning and growing, and watch over those who are absent today. Lead us all to places of renewal and refreshment. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of all faithfulness, through the witness of the faithful, departed, you reveal love in action. Embolden us by their example to build up the beloved community in all the contexts we encounter. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated for the offerings. Offerings in support of our mission and ministry can be made online at elcvienna.org or mailed to the church. Every gift matters.
give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn.
us out into mission in the world. We have a few uh, announcements and invitations for you to come and join us in ministry. Um, first of all, please remember our day camp is coming up here. And uh, registration is open for six years old through ten years old. Our preschool is currently enrolling ages two and a half through four year olds getting ready for the fall. Uh, we have two Bible studies that happen at 9 a.m. before worship here. The men's group meets, and uh, there is also a, a Bible study on the lessons in those morning, and that group meets in the library. Um, join us after worship for uh, coffee and treats in the center. We'd love to get to spend some time with you. That area is also air-conditioned, rest assured. <laughs> There's uh, fair trade products being sold today. That goes for a good cause. Check those out. Um, learn a little bit about them if you haven't already. Afterwards, um, any help uh, putting things away after worship here would be much appreciated. We have a number of groups that use the space throughout the week. And uh, we promise to work on the air conditioning. Hope to have it um, next Sunday. But if not, we know how to do it in here. You guys did a great job. And uh, please give a hand to all those folks that worked so hard to set this up.
something different here. 